everyone, welcome to the MBS show, episode number 230. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Twilight Genesis. G'day. <laughs> Hello, mate. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty damn fine for uh, midnight runs. Ah, uh, yeah. Time zones, they're a thing. Well, finally, you're on with only one person in the same time zone as you, and we're still recording at midnight. Oh, yeah, true that, because I have to watch the newest episode. Honestly, if we were to do it, like, in the afternoon, it, it still works. There's no updated news, so it still works if we really want to. But I've been on this schedule for almost four years now, and I really need to watch a new episode so I won't get spoiled. It's, it's just routine. Oh, yeah, so true. It's just routine. It's like a bad habit you can kick. So, anyway, how are you doing, man? How was your day? Uh, my day is all right. Slept through most of it, then spent the rest of it uh, hanging out with some friends, celebrating a friend's birthday party. Awesome, awesome. Birthday party's always fun. Yeah, I mean, it was only three of us, but we, we enjoyed ourselves. So, as far as we're concerned, it was a birthday party. It, it was cake. There was music. Awesome. Those things are always good. Birthday parties, cake, music, and occasional someone telling bad jokes. Uh, plenty of bad jokes. We we can't run a single night where we don't have them. Yep. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, it's just going to be the both of us for this episode. Well, because everyone I invited was kind of busy. And Twy here was gracious enough to have his presence on the show again. Glad to be back. A lot earlier than I was expecting to be back, and that's even better. <laughs> yeah. The last time when we talked, you haven't popped up your YouTube channel yet, have you? Well, my YouTube channel's up and running. Uh, I actually put up a, an announcement video for some things I'm doing at the end of this month. Uh, earlier today, which also mentioned that I'll be on the MBS show this weekend. <laughs> uh, the time paradox for that one is going to be fun. Yeah, well, that video went up at about eight hours ago. Only, I think, five or six people have seen it, so it's going to be surprised when everyone shows up on Tuesday to find a n- new episode of MBS show is out and I'm on it. Yep, and telling people that you told them earlier on. Uh, it's confusing. But anyway, uh, we, we got nothing new, so let's hop into news. Yes. So in today's first news, legendary animator Michael Gianne joins the Pony Movie crew. So who is this guy, you're wondering? Why is he legendary? Well, Twy, I think you told me about his repertoire of films that he did. Uh, yeah, he's got quite a list, I think. It's like 20 or 30 things that he's on here as. Mostly as a special effects animator or a character animator, but he's worked on movies like An American Tale, The Land Before Time, Old Dogs Go to Heaven, as some of like the really early stuff. But then he's done live action things such as Mortal Kombat, Space Jam, and what was that other one? Sco- the Scooby Doo live action film? Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Some of his biggest things I'd have to say for would be working on The Iron Giant. Brave and Ratatouille. And you know what? I'm looking through the list here and I'm seeing a few things that I have grew up with. To name a few from his latest work to his earliest is, um, let's see, I've heard of Battleborn, the video game. Too bad it came out when Overwatch was coming, but still, he worked on that. Brave, I haven't seen, but I heard of. Uh, Ratatouille, awesome movie. Juniper Lee, awesome cartoon, Star Wars, The Clone Wars, the TV series, that that was too good. The Powerpuff Girl movie, that was a thing. The Scooby-Doo movie, Awesome Mrs. Jones, this this one was interesting. If this was the movie, was this the movie or the cartoon series? Yes, yeah, the movie. Yeah, it's, it's the movie. <laughs> it landed live action with 2D animation. Interesting. The Iron Giant was good. Uh, Quest for Camelot, that was good too. And Space Jam, who could forget that awesome movie, right? Space Jam? Space Jam is fantastic. It, it's a classic down here. Yep. It, it will only be remembered for its soundtrack. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mortal Kombat, who can forget about that one, right? Like, that was the first good video game movie adaptation. First, and some could argue the last. Uh, I think the only. Well, if you really want to count, The Prince of Persia was not bad, right? It was not bad, but yeah, I don't think it was great or anything. I'm pretty sure most people down here missed it. <laughs> yeah. 
uh, well, honestly, uh, between Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter, those two were just too good. <laughs> Uh, I never really got into fighting games too much. No, I was just talking about the movies, like <laughs> the, the Street Fighter movie with John Claude Van Damme. <laughs> oh, that was too good. Uh, yeah, I haven't seen the, uh, the Street Fighter movies. Oh. I don't think I've actually seen any of the Street Fighter things. Wait. Yeah, no, I watched a couple of the animated movies and one of the animated series. That's about it. <laughs> yeah, but I tell you guys, you should really try and watch the Street Fighter movie starring uh, Raul Julia. That, that's just awesome on its own. Like, a f- lot of memes came out of it, but still, just go ahead and watch it if you can. But his repertoire of work here is long. He started in 1985 and he's still going to this day. And like you mentioned before, he's mostly working on um, as an animator or a special effects animator. So yeah, it, it's cool. And him joining the MLP movie for next year, that's going to be cool. And from what I understand here that he kind of got turned into the project by meeting with Jason Thiessen at some thing that they saw each other with. Like, it, it was interesting. Just look on his website, which will be in the show notes. I'm so excited for this movie. Every time I turn around, it seems like they've got someone new on it. So they've released some new interesting bit of a lore as a f- promotional thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, talking about lores, right? Here's something interesting that just popped up. You remember Rainbow Dash's dad? Uh, yes, very vaguely, but I remember how the whole fandom sort of went, that's got to be her dad. There's no way it couldn't be. And it was just a huge acceptance yeah. of this headcanon. Now, honestly, like, you look at the main, look at the coat color. It's obviously her dad. Like, <laughs> who could it be, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, lead character designer, Cora... Koska <laughs> revealed that nah man they ain't Rainbow Dash's dad <laughs> like what <laughs> so this raises questions who is that Pegasus my bets are not on an older brother or a cousin no 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 no. here's the thing how long has this show been on six years now and we have been lied to for almost six years Oh, true. I don't know it what took to them so long to confirm that or <laughs> deny it. I, I don't know what to think anymore. What? Oh. Well, the, the next thing that the, she has confirmed is even... Well, something that the fandom's sort of already known, but dead set now. We, we can't turn around and try and deny it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Applejack's parents. Officially dead. <laughs> oh, you could put it nice... You, you... She, well, she didn't pull any punches. She was asked, uh, are Applejack's parents dead? And she simply just said yes. <laughs> oh, wow. Honestly, with Rainbow Dash there, I can agree with what you mentioned before. Older brother, younger, no, no, younger, like, yeah, older brother, uh, cousin probably. Yeah, that can work. I, I can see the family resemblance there. Yeah, and, well, we forgot to mention who Cora is here and, I don't think we forgot, right? Like, she's the lead character designer. And according to the BabsCon press, Cora has been working her magic as a character designer for My Little Pony Friendship is Magic since Season 3, becoming a lead character designer for Season 5 and 6. She's provided the character concept design for Equestria Girls, leading the character design effort for Rainbow Rocks and Friendship Games. And she was the character designer for season one of Little Pet Shop. So yeah, she she's in deep with the lore. So she has seen the Bibles and a lot of other things involving with the show. And Applejack's parents, like I think a statement here explains a bit of what's going on. Um, someone asked, how did they die? And she responded by, I'm sure one day you'll find out the story of Applejack's parents. But it's a spoiler. They might address that in the future. So that's cool. I hope it's addressed in the show and not in, uh, say, one of the IDW comics. <sighs> Honestly, um, with the IDW comics, they're tier 2 canon. So it's hard to put it as pure canon. So, yeah. It'll be interesting if they do do that and acknowledge that's the way they do it and not kind of <laughs> acknowledging it on show. Like they hand wave it, just read the comics. Uh, but still, uh, other than that, people did ask what she wanted to see in the future, and she would like to see more zebras and a royal sister episode. That's cool. I can get behind that. 
Yeah. We we've gotten so little of uh, Zakora over the seasons that sometimes I forget that she's actually a character in the show. <laughs> So I'd love to see, even if we don't see more zebras, even if we just see more Zakora, oh, yeah. I would be happy with that. And I think everyone's waiting for a Royal Sisters episode, or at least a Celestia episode, since we've technically gotten two Lunar episodes. Mm, true, true. Plus a lot of uh, Lunar-heavy uh, appearances with some of the CMC episodes. Mm, true, true. But honestly, with the zebra thing, I do want to know more about their lore because if you notice the flank of Zakura, it's kind of a cutie mark. And I want to know, is that how all zebra looks like or is that specifically her cutie mark? Yeah, especially with uh, last week's episode where they mentioned that only ponies are known to get cutie marks. Mm, yeah, yeah. Uh, which makes me wonder if that is just like a... Instead of like a cutie mark, just a a pattern that all zebras naturally get, like they have from birth or something. Or could zebra be quote unquote ponies too? Because well, they're equines, and why not? Right, like they could be considered as ponies in that world. No, yes. They, yeah, they Zakora is very similar in size and shape to the ponies. Mm-hmm. Uh, unlike other. Equine races, because we've seen the Saudi Arabians, and they were horses, taller than the ponies. They were, yeah, they were, they were flat out. They're just horses. Yeah, like so. This... I'm wondering if there's if the zebras evolved from like the similar ancestor, maybe. Yeah, that's just too deep into thinking. But I do really want to know if zebras are ponies or are they kind of. Well, there's a lot of things that going on there. But we do need more zebra episodes coming forward from now. And Royal Sisters episode? Why not, right? Like, what's, what's wrong with having, um, Celestia and Luna having their own episode? Like, they can carry an episode, right? We don't really need the main six anymore. Yeah, I've become disillusioned with some of the main sixes things. I would very much love to see Celestia and Luna a bit more. Yeah. Especially, uh, the only time we've seen, well, might, no, after the premiere for this season, I think, We've only seen Celestia, and we that was in uh, No Second Prances, and all she did was sit there at the end of the episode and have that sort of passive-aggressive sigh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember that. Uh, oh, still, it's one of those things that I hope they kind of do it, because, well, if the fans want it and they can have a good story behind it, why not, right? Yeah. So anyway, uh, up next is Butch Hartman draws Twilight Sparkle in Fairly Odd Parents style. You remember that show, right? Yeah, I absolutely love Fairly Odd Parents. Uh, if I could afford it, I'd buy the DVDs. Yeah, but if Fairly Odd Parents is uh, like a Simpsons show. It's never dying. Uh, actually, I'm pretty sure it's over. I'm really? pretty sure it hasn't had a new. I'm fairly sure it hasn't had a new episode in a couple years. Oh, yeah, now, now we need to do the research because this is curious. Like, we're curious. Wikipedia is to the rescue. Yeah, let's see. Blah, 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 blah. Well, it's on season 10. Number of episodes. 145 episodes aired over 10 seasons. Uh, uh, release, uh, tw- 2001 to present. So yeah, no, it must still be going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. That's weird. Wait, 2001, you say? I thought it would. Yeah, it started in 2001. Oof, wow. R- originally released March 30th, 2001. I thought it would have been over by now. Yeah, well, seems that we're getting more. But that's besides the point. Um, Bush Hartman here, if you guys don't know, is the creator of Fairly Odd Parents and Danny Phantom. He is responsible for those good shows and so on. Um, apparently, he has his own YouTube channel where he can do whatever he wants. Previously on his YouTube channel, he did how Danny Phantom would look like 10 years after. And it was a pretty cool concept. Um, you got to see the main stars grow up 10 years later. And with uh, his newest video, it's like modern cartoons in the Fairly Odd Parents style. So he did the Ninja Turtles, uh, Gravity Falls, Steven Universe, Adventure Time, and, well, Twilight Sparkle from My Little Pony. And... 
oh boy, uh, if you guys check it out, he has an interesting style. I quite like it. It's such a unique style. I don't think I've seen too many shows have anything that looks quite like uh, Fairly Odd Parents. Oh yeah, true that. It's one of those things where it's different and I'm sure if this was how it was when it originally aired, nobody's going to watch it. <laughs> well, now that I know it's still going, I'm definitely going to be looking out to watch some more Fairly Odd Parents. And I'm probably going to check out this guy's YouTube channel as well. Yeah, it's really awesome. He describes how doing things is. Like he mentioned in this video when he drew Twilight, he said that, oh, Twilight Strong, Voice Team Eternal, and also Twilight Sparkle. And he thought that, oh, I should have drawn Timmy here because they voice by the same character as whatnot. Like it was an interesting thought into his mindset. On to other news. Ay, caramba. How do I even talk about this one, man? Like, even Fluttisha is <laughs> face hoofing. Oh, yeah, this, this is a bit of odd news. I never would have expected to see this pop up. Apple's iMessage update includes Not Safe for Work Pony Surprise is the article title on Equestria Daily. And that's makes me hesitant to want to read further on, but at the same time, oddly curious. <laughs> Uh well, honestly, uh, how how do I even? Mm. Well, okay, Apple released their new iOS ten update recently, and included in that update is an overhaul to iMessage. Now it's mirroring uh, Facebook Messenger. Like, if you have the Facebook Messenger app on your mobile devices, you can add stickers and whatnot. You know that, right? You use WhatsApp. Yeah. App, yeah? So they're trying to. Well, I don't use the app, but yeah, I you... know it because even the uh, the browser uses it. Oh yeah. So they're emulating that, and over at Apple, the way you do it is you can buy or get free ones as stickers, and you can send them to your friends or whatnot to be really cute and whatnot. It only works between iMessenger, and apparently if you know how to add in your own stickers. You can, well, have it there on the iMessenger to download. And uh, let's just say that Apple is not responsible for whatever users upload. Yeah. But they do have the power to take it down, though. <laughs> True. Did they? I'm not sure if the article said if they did or not. I honestly tried to find a My Little Pony sticker on iOS 10. And nah, they didn't exist. So I'm guessing they took it down. Oh, probably. Because they set, they censored a bunch of search terms because you can send GIFs through it, which is what the, uh, the article's about. Is f apparently for some reason the word but, <laughs> uh, was, well, but as in B-U double T, <laughs> was not censored. And it has a, well, Embarrassing gif of Fluttershy that pops up. Wait, really? Really? Okay, okay, I need to double check this. I need to double check this because I'm curious. I'm curious. Let me see. Okay, open this. Open <laughs> this. Uh, Let's see here. if curiosity kills the Norman. I searched My Little Pony and I didn't find any, so I need to search for butts. <laughs> butts. I just say butts. <laughs> butts. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what the uh, article says. Not sure if it's been taken down because the Equestria Daily article doesn't say if it's been taken down or not. And a, let's see, does the article that they source from say it? Nah, no, I have it here and I don't see any pony but, <laughs> uh, no. So no, I think they... it must have been taken down then. Yeah, so that, that has to be the only logical answer to it. So nah, no more pony butts. <laughs> I see butts. Yeah. I'm childish. The gift can still be viewed on the uh on the source article, but I have I would not recommend it unless you're uh fairly open minded. And made of stern stuff, which I know you guys are. And I know you guys are oh, curious. Yeah. For you parents out there who well uh, let's just say you check it out first and think if it's okay or not, because to me I think it's suggestive at the best, but you, you you decide. You decide. I'm not going to tell you how to do things. 
I I definitely wouldn't show it to small children. Yeah. No, no, they will giggle. They will giggle. The only only the smarter ones will uh, raise an eyebrow. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Anyway, let's run away from that. <laughs> to uh, you know that other pony movie that's coming out this year, Legend of Everfree. Legend of the Everfree. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm actually arranging a meetup, and we're having a cake that's going to have sunset and a Dajio on it. Oh. We're having a sun Dajio cake. <laughs> nice. I am so excited. Where for are you going to wash that? Uh, from what I've uh, seen. The, the movie isn't being aired on TV like the previous ones. Instead, it's going to be released straight to Netflix. So the weekend after its supposed Netflix uh, release, uh, we're going to have a meetup and we're all just going to gather around someone's computer. <laughs> and we're going to sit down and we're going to watch it, presuming it gets released on all regions of Netflix. Uh, all right, all right. Uh, Otherwise, we're going to have to find an alternate way to watch it, which being Australian, we will find a way. You know, it'd be funny, right, if your friend has a 14-inch monitor computer and you guys hurdle around to watch it? I considered that, but uh, <laughs> we've actually got some people volunteering to bring around their larger TVs. That's good, but still, the 14-inch hurdling around... Oh, you know what's worse? If you guys share a 3DS screen? Oh, I was going to say uh, a C- CTR monitor, like the old big block computer monitors that are only like 15 inch. Those are good. Those are good. Like it's still big, but you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to take it way back. If you guys have a Game Gear screen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Game Gear? Oh, I haven't heard of those in years. <laughs> I know. I'm taking it way back. Uh, but anyway, oh, Legend of Everfree. So with every, uh, Equestria Girl movie comes an Equestria Girl soundtrack. It happened for the first one, the second one, which was really awesome, the third one, which was okay, and now the fourth one, this one, Legend of the Everfree. So, someone asked any word about the soundtrack coming, and Ishi Rudell, the director for said movie, replied on Twitter saying, I'm sure it's coming, and you know what? He's tr- right. It did came out. And it's available on iTunes and Google Play. And fun fact, it's also available on YouTube for streaming. And Spotify. Ah, yep, Spotify is also good too. You do use so Spotify. So I know exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't, I don't use Spotify. Spotify is for, for when I watch Maddie stream. Uh, but after this, after we're done recording, I'm checking this out straight away. Alrighty then. So, anywho, um, with this one, uh, it's available on the iTunes and uh, Google Play. Uh, the downside of this one is it only has six songs. The upside is it's cheap. <laughs> it's not nine ninety nine. It's about six forty something, if I remember right. Uh, I'm not sure if it's showing up in Australian or American prices, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm American because it's the US on the uh, URL. Your, uh, American dollars, five ninety nine, yeah. on iTunes. You know what? I can change that. Give me a second and see if I can set it to Australian. Okay, Asia Pacific, Australian dollars. Um, now, oh god, this is not working. A port, a port is not working. But anywho, yeah, um, it's available. Uh, uh, in Australian dollars, it is eight dollars forty nine. Yeah. Okay. That's well. Converts, I guess, like, it sounds about right. But anywho, um... I'm gonna check that conversion now. Oh, okay. Well, you do that. I have a funny story. Yep. Uh... It's more expensive in Australia than in America. <laughs> Convertive, 849 Australian is $6.36, uh, US. Yeah. According to, uh, the converter on Google. Hmm. Well, it could be a lot of things, but, um, a funny story of mine is that, <laughs> uh, when I popped this up and I looked at the listing on iTunes via my iTunes app on the PC, I click on it, I look for it, and I found it. Like, oh yeah, it's available. And I click, I didn't really read through anything, I just saw it and I click download. Uh, download or buy, whatever it's called, so I did. So I was like, oh yeah, this is awesome, this is awesome. And the titles were, okay, how, how do I put this? Like, the titles for the song when I first read it was something about La Lenyada 
they ever free. Midnight and me. I, I kept it to Magia. That does sound strange to you. Yeah, what language is that? <laughs> Espanola. <laughs> you, you, you managed to download it in Spanish. But here's the thing. <laughs> Apart from the research, in English? No, apart from the research, I noticed that I bought the Spanish soundtrack. It's like, wait, what? Spanish soundtrack? What? No, no. And I had to go back to iTunes where I bought the song and double checked it. And oh my God, they have three versions of the song. English, Spanish, and French. And like, I accidentally pressed the Spanish one and bought it. And like, I feel stupid. Oh, so yeah, <laughs> I bought the Spanish soundtrack for this one. So if I want to hear MLP, uh, Legend of Everything in Spanish, I can. <laughs> can you refund it or have it uh, swapped for the English version at all? I tried to, but the process is very tedious. It's not easy. It's not like Steam with how you want to refund it. But you know what? Lesson learned. Next time when you try and download something, make sure you read everything before downloading. <laughs> but uh, uh, it's it's an awesome soundtrack. Um, for the price you pay, um, it, technically it's about a dollar for one song, so it's not bad. It depends on uh, <laughs> which yeah. country you're in. Yeah. <laughs> This dang Australian tax. Mm, so true too. But anyway, uh, this song here, um, it's not bad. It's from the upcoming movie. I haven't he- heard all of it. I just heard the um, main title song. And it was pretty good. Uh, it had that banjo theme. Like, Apple Jack will be very happy with it. So, other than that, it's cool. Worth the money? I, I'm not sure. I <laughs> I won't say that it's worth. Like I haven't heard the whole thing yet. But if you're curious, you can listen to it for free on Spotify and YouTube. So yay! So anywho, uh, th- th- that's the news for this week. We managed to cover about thirty minutes worth of content. So yay! That's good. It's a good effort. Yep. Gold star for us. Yeah, gold star, and have some Vegemite. <laughs> that's what we do, right? <laughs> No? Yes. <laughs> but only if you do it right. I've seen too many people, they, they do it way too wrong. Just, they apply it like they pu- apply peanut butter and just huge swaths of it. That, that's, a, that's a quick way to burn out your taste buds. <laughs> but wait, honestly, isn't Vegemite some kind of... Um, I, I, how do I put this? It's some... It's extract from beer brewing. Mm-hmm. It's like leftovers from when you make beer. That's what it is. Mm. That's how it was uh, uh, discovered. Mm, and only Australians kind of like it, right? Like, Australians have that taste uh, buds. Australians are the only ones that know how to use it properly. Everyone, a lot of people tend to uh, like it after they figure out how to actually properly apply it. Because <laughs> as I said, everyone puts it on too thick and <laughs> then it's way too strong a taste. You have to put it on fairly light. Uh, because um, I do remember... Uh, a similar product called Broville, where it's instead of beer extracts, it's kind of um, cow something. I don't really remember, but you can make it into soup. You can eat it with a rice porridge and whatnot. So that's something cool, right? No, or am I just getting old? Yeah, I have no idea. I've never heard of that product, and I wouldn't do any of those things with Vegemite. <laughs> And uh, I like Vegemite. <laughs> uh, alright then. So anyway, um, uh, besides weirding people out, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at dmbshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show Twitter account is at show. You can catch me at Norman Sanzo, where I tweet about, where I tweet about toys, food, and whatever tickles my fancy. And Twy, where can they reach you, man? Uh, I've got my YouTube channel, Two Pints Please, and the Facebook for it, which is Double Pine Productions. But unlike the last time I was on the show, I also have a Twitter, at Midnight Pint, uh, with an underscore between Midnight and Pint, just in case people screw that up. <laughs> I don't know how finicky Twitter is with that sort of thing. 
so I'm not taking any chances there. <laughs> but yes, I have a Twitter now for the channel. Yay, that's awesome. And also, well, um, I noticed that you uh, like and reblog. Thank you, man. That's how you can help the show too. And go follow Twy here. He's an awesome guy, so he does need the followers too. Yes, follow me so I can feel popular. <laughs> you can feel popular, but doesn't that mean you're popular? <laughs> oh, that's mean. It's the thought that counts. <laughs> True that. Uh, but anyway, also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on com. Links are in the show notes. And also please subscribe to the newest show, the NBA Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Ever wanted to hear Silver Quill terrorize Sapphire Heart songs? Well, you can hear it on there. Ever want to hear Sapphire Heart songs cowering in a corner? It's there. And everyone to hear me kind of shake my head in disappointment and wondering what I'm doing with my life. Well, you can hear it on this show too, but over there is even more prevalent. But yay, hey, uh, links will be in the show notes. Please do subscribe. We do need love. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. And I've been Twilight Genesis. And let's catch you next week with another amazing episode. See ya. Bye.